Now, in just a moment, a weed buster like you've never seen. In WA's wheat belt, there's a whole lot of invention aimed at neutralising what comes out the back of the header. A wise man once said to me, it seems ironic that we spend all year spraying expensive herbicides all over our paddock to kill weeds, and then at harvest time, we just harvest them and spread all the survivors evenly back over the paddock. So really, doing something with those weed seeds at harvest is crucial. So, aided by GRDC-funded research, fire is making a comeback. On the Messina family properties at Mullawa, they're among the many keeping the chaff in narrow windrows for burning later on. They've added a nifty device to the back of their header. Just basically, it's just some plate with some, obviously some steel square just to get the width of, so the width of the shaker tray. Uh, coming out wider than that, so anything that's coming off the tray can hit the side of the, sh of the shield. And then it's basically the, the angle of this is quite important that you try and get it as steep as you can. The material just slides down and we've found it really has really, really knocked the weed numbers down immensely um, in our program and yeah, allows us to most of the time get an extra wheat crop. The really tricky bit is getting the burning right. So yeah, it, it's not a case of, oh, well, let's winrow this paddock and chuck a match in and let it go. Uh, it's a bit easier on lupins and canola, um, but you virtually um, just got to pick the right conditions. And that's where the research came in. GRDC investment of grower levies made it possible to unlock the weed-killing secrets of fire. We've just measured, firstly, what temperature do the weed seeds have to get be at to um, for them to be 100% destroyed. At 400 degrees for 10 seconds will kill annual ryegrass seeds. 400 degrees for 30 seconds is what's required to kill wild radish pods and seeds. Then we went and measured all the different types of crop stubble windrows. We were finding that when we narrow the windrows down like this, and we burn when there is some light wind to fuel that fire all the way to the ground, we can achieve that four to 500 degrees for up to a couple of minutes often when it's done properly. Just down the road from the Messina Farms, Darren Cobley's taken things one step further. His bit of kit leaves the straw in the paddock and collects the seeds and chaff from his header. Comes off the sieves, gets channeled into a, um, into a wide uh, row, goes onto a conveyor belt, the conveyor belt just conveys it up to the cart and then we just tip it out. So it's all in the condensed area in the paddock. Rather than burn it, he's exploring other possible uses. He's already using some of it as roughage at his feedlot. Other growers in WA sell it for biofuel. But burn it or use it, it's organic matter that's lost to the soil. Surely there's a way to knock the weed seeds on the head without that cost to the system. And there may well be. Meet the most anticipated thing in weed management since glyphosate. It's the Harrington Seed Destructor, and with patents pending, we can't tell you exactly how it works, but we can tell you what it does, and that's pulverise all the chaff that comes out of the header so that any weed seeds are turned to flour. It's the combination of 14 years of work for inventor and grain farmer Ray Harrington who is determined to find a way of destroying weed seeds at harvest. And the project was the big C. I was going to catch it, crush it, cart it, cook it or cremate it. In the end, crushing it won the day and the destructor was born. So far, trial results have been nothing less than impressive. The, the actual principle of killing the weeds is tested. You know, we had huge trial results last year on my brother's place, just huge practical trial results. Looks like nearly 100% kill. The word's already out and the destructor is eagerly anticipated. That is big news and the farmers up here are lining up to buy them. I recently surveyed farmers, asked 19 farmers, would you buy a Harrington destructor? 14 of them said yes and three of those actually said we'll have two thanks. So they're, they're very, very keen on it and it is going to be a very useful tool. This is a prototype, in fact you're witnessing its first day in the paddock but several models should be available for local farmers to field test later this year. 
Yet just a year ago, Ray almost gave the project up when he ran out of money. That's when GRDC stepped in with financial backing to ensure that the destructor wasn't lost to Australia's grain growers. I think they've already spent a million dollars and um, without them this project would never have got off the ground. I would, have, I would have had my own and that's as far as it would have gone. But even measures like burning, crushing, carting are not brick walls for resistant weeds. For instance, plants that shed seed earlier than harvest become the new resistant weeds and the cycle starts again. Everyone has to change their mindset from economic weed control to managing weed seed banks and that means taking no prisoners and the only way to take no prisoners is by using more than one weed control technique in one season. Andrew Storey runs GRDC-sponsored workshops for agronomists and growers on what's been dubbed Integrated Weed Management, or IWM. Well, it's a fancy name for basically just using a large number, of, well, as wide a range of weed management techniques, both herbicide and non-herbicide, to control weeds. But the, the key to it is, is uh, seed banks, weed seed banks, and driving seed banks down. GRDC has backed all these projects and invested in its integrated weed management program because it's seen the writing on the wall. Herbicides alone, in fact any single measure, can't control weeds. It's always only going to be a matter of time before they develop resistance. If herbicides were the answer to weed management, just using herbicides, we would have eradicated ryegrass and wild radish 10-15 years ago because they, we had very good herbicides for it. So we've already proven that just using herbicides doesn't work. So now we are proving that integrated weed management is what we need for good weed management into the future.